after completing this chapter, the learner will, with reference to Marpole Annex 2, know the goals of Marpole Annex 2, be aware of the definition of a noxious liquid substance and that different categories are applied to these substances by Annex 2, be aware of the effects of noxious liquid substances in the sea, be aware of the kind of operational discharges of noxious liquid substances that may occur and the restrictions placed on them, be aware of the kind of accidental discharges of noxious liquid substances that may occur and the measures in place to minimize them. The main goal of Marpole Annex 2 is to reduce the harm to the environment from pollution of the sea from noxious liquids carried in bulk. So what is meant by a noxious liquid substance? Noxious means physically harmful to living beings. Annex 2 defines a noxious liquid substance as any substance listed as pollution category X, Y or Z in the International Bulk Chemical Code. Substances are classified by United Nations experts according to their harmful effects. Category X substances are the most harmful, with category Z the least harmful. Substances categorized as OS have been considered and not found to be harmful. What happens when a noxious liquid substance enters the sea depends on its chemical and physical properties, and these vary widely from substance to substance. What noxious liquid substances have in common is that they can harm life by poisoning it, causing irritation or corrosion, coating plants, or blocking their sunlight. Operational discharges occur from ships carrying noxious liquid substances when the cargo tanks are cleaned or ballasted. In order to minimize noxious liquid substance mixtures when tank cleaning, a procedures and arrangement, P and A, manual, is required to show the crew how to operate the cargo equipment effectively. Annex 2 also requires tanks to be capable of being stripped until only small volumes of cargo are left. The tank washing procedure must be at least as thorough as the P&A manual requires. Assuming the tank has been washed using water and not a cleaning chemical, then any further washing water may be discharged overboard, if the ship is outside the Antarctic area. The ship must be on passage, above a minimum speed, while meeting other requirements regarding water depth, and distance from land. Sometimes cargo residues will be left in the slop tanks. Ports are required to provide reception facilities for noxious liquid substance slops. After a cargo tank has been discharged and pre-washed, if necessary, Annex 2 allows that it may be ballasted, although the ballast would be subject to the same discharge criteria as tank washings. Normally, ballast will be loaded into segregated ballast tanks to prevent cargo contamination and avoid these restrictions. Ships carrying noxious liquid substances need to keep a cargo record book, which must be completed each time any of the cargo and ballast operations listed in the front of the book take place. Rules for completion and retention of record books are similar to those mentioned above for Annex 1 oil tanker cargo record books. Accidental discharges of noxious liquid substances may occur from ships, such as spills during loading and discharge, leakages following collision or grounding, cargo tank leakage, leaks following other casualties, such as fire or explosion, hull failure, excessive list, submergence or foundering, wrecking or stranding. All ships carrying noxious liquid substances are required to have a shipboard marine pollution emergency plan, SMPEP, 
which will provide directions on the immediate action to take following a leak or overflow during cargo operations. On most ships, special cleanup equipment will have been supplied and its location recorded in the plan. The crew should have carried out training and drills to improve crew response to a spill. The rules require the cargo tanks to be in protected locations, depending on the danger from the cargo. A range of ship types is defined, which provide different amounts of protection to the cargo tanks. Type 1 gives the most protection, and Type 3 the least. After damage, the regulations address the ability of the ship to stay afloat without capsizing. Sinking or capsizing would probably result in all the cargo escaping into the sea. There are many rules on the construction of cargo tanks and the materials to be used. Some cargoes are so dangerous that they must be carried in limited quantities per tank or in tanks which are independent of the ship's structure and less likely to leak. Annex 2 attempts to minimize pollution from other casualties by means of the SMPEP, which contains the necessary immediate actions. We have now reached the end of this chapter on Marple Annex 2 as it applies to ships carrying noxious liquid substances in bulk. We have considered the main goal of Annex 2. What Marpole Annex 2 means by a noxious liquid substance and how they are classified according to how harmful they are, the likely sources of operational and of accidental pollution. After completing this chapter, the learner will, with reference to Marpole Annex 3, know the goals of Marpole Annex 3, be aware what Annex 3 defines as a harmful substance in packaged form, be aware of the effects of harmful substances in the sea. Be aware of the kind of operational discharges of harmful substances that are allowed and the restrictions placed on them. Be aware of the kind of accidental discharges of harmful substances that may occur and the measures in place to minimize them. The main goal of Marpole Annex 3 is to reduce the harm to the environment from harmful substances from ships. Annex 3 applies to substances carried in packages rather than in bulk, where Annex 2 applies. A harmful substance is defined in Annex 3 as a substance which is listed as a marine pollutant in the International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code or which presents a similar hazard. The packages containing the harmful substances come in all sorts of forms, from small plastic drums to road tankers, and are loaded or discharged as cargo. Empty packages that have contained harmful substances are considered the same as full ones until the packages have been cleaned of all residues. A very large number of harmful substances may be carried in packaged form and their effects on the environment are also large. The criteria for determining that a substance is harmful show that the main concerns are the poisonous effects on fish, shellfish and aquatic plants, both immediately and over time. Each individual substance has different chemical and physical properties which will affect the nature, position and persistence of the pollution. Disposal of packages of harmful substances at sea would be considered dumping, which is illegal. Leakages from packages onto deck or into bilges may be discharged overboard if allowed by flag state rules. Accidental discharges of harmful substances might occur due to leakage from packages, loss of packages overboard, loss of packages with the ship. To minimize pollution from leaky packages, Annex 3 requires packaging to be designed to minimize the risk of leaks. A stowage plan setting out the location of the harmful substances on board is to be made. This allows extra care to be taken to prevent damage and for the crew to decide whether a leak from a package may be harmful.
To reduce the risk of packages being lost overboard, packages of harmful substances are required to be properly stowed and secured so as to minimize the hazards to the marine environment. The ship must have a cargo stowage plan which identifies where harmful substances are so that if packages are lost overboard, the crew can decide whether they contain harmful substances. Packages must be marked so that the markings will survive at least three months immersion in the sea. This helps identify harmful substances to salvers and to provide a clear warning to anyone finding a package on a beach that it contains a marine pollutant and is dangerous. The requirement to have a cargo stowage plan which identifies where harmful substances are means that, should it be thought necessary to dump cargo in an attempt to save the ship, it may be possible to leave the harmful substances untouched. A copy of the stowage plan or a manifest listing the harmful substances must be left ashore and accessible to the authorities of the port state until the substances are unloaded. At every loading or unloading of harmful substances, the plan must be updated. This enables anti-pollution forces and salvers to better determine the risks of pollution and the chances of recovering the pollutant. We have now reached the end of this chapter on MARPOL Annex 3 as it applies to ships carrying harmful substances in packaged form. We have considered the main goal of Annex 3, what MARPOL Annex 3 means by a harmful substance in packaged form, the likely sources of operational and of accidental pollution, and how Annex 3 tries to prevent harmful pollution from both sources.